third seminar that we put on during our 40th anniversary was taking your website from OK to outstanding. Lots of key hints here on how to drive traffic to your website. And you can download that seminar free right here on our website. I'm going to go through a heck of a lot of information. I'm a pack rat, so if you ever see my house, we have Adam there, my assistant, and he knows that we have piles and piles of things because you have so much information. So I'm going to try to give you a lot of information here, okay, about how websites work and what, what's available out there, etc. So let me start with some statistics about the Internet so you can somehow get your mind around how massive the traffic is, etc. There are 255 million websites on the internet. There are nine, 294 billion, with a B, email messages received every day. That's more than 10 billion emails an hour. By the way, 89% are spam. <laughs> I think they're all coming to me. <laughs> Two billion videos are watched on YouTube every day. Isn't that amazing? 30 billion pieces, this is a, a recent stu a study that just came out this month. Uh, 30 billion pieces of content are shared on, shared on Facebook every month. My kids have a lot to do with that. 25 billion tweets are sent on, uh, were sent in 2010. I used to think, what do they say, twits? No? <laughs> People who send tweets are... I don't fully get, even though we do coaching on... Uh, on Twitter, it's still very, you know, not everybody uses Twitter, and I still don't get it. But So here's what we're going to cover today. Websites. What are the elements of an effective website? Keyword research, an essential part of almost everything you do on the Internet from a marketing standpoint. Search engine optimization. That's optimizing, which means making your website Google friendly, primarily Google, because Google do dominates the internet. Conversion. When you get people coming to your website, how do you convert them so they become buyers? Or in the case of Kelly, when she was doing the con constant contact, convert them so you capture their email, and then you can send them emails on an ongoing basis and, in a, and uh, have an ongoing dialogue with them, hopefully eventually to sell them. Also, I'm going to talk about attracting visitors to your website. Okay. So there are three primary elements of internet marketing. Getting traffic, bringing that traffic to your website, and converting that traffic. Okay, so you're, we're gonna focus on website, we're gonna focus on how to bring some traffic to the website and how to convert. And just a note, we talk a lot about Facebook, and Kelly was talking a lot about Facebook. It's not a hard and fast rule, but it's something to consider. Most people, if you're going to sell somebody on what it is that you're trying to sell, you want to bring them to your website. So you want to use Facebook and Twitter and all those things ultimately to bring them to your website because you have a lot more opportunity, a lot more freedom on your website to tell them your whole story. So effective website. Website creation has three basic pieces. The first two are pretty simple. It's by a URL or a website, a www address, a name. Get a host for your website, which is like a host for your phone service, like AT&T or Verizon. And then you have to have something that sits on it, and that's your website, designing your website. Now, designing your website, you can do it by yourself or you can hire someone. And the great news is websites are getting easier and easier to do yourself. I had this lady uh, and her and her husband, and they spent $3,500 for somebody to do the website. They didn't optimize it for Google or anything else. They just spent 3,500 bucks. And I thought, I looked at what they did and what they paid for, and I thought, <clears throat> wow, there are some terrific designers. There's no question about it. But what they had was simple enough that they could have done it themselves. Or they could have gotten a kid. I got one. You know, from school. It's amazing. They all know how to do it. In fact, you have to get a kid. You can't get an old person. <laughs> It needs to be a, a child. There's somehow they seem to, it's in their DNA. Uh, there are some good services for website uh, development if you want to do it yourself. There's Intuit, which uses a service called homestead.com. 
There's GoDaddy. They have uh, low-cost uh, web development services and SiteSell and others. Also, WordPress. Kelly talked a little bit about blogs. Well, blog software, primarily WordPress, because WordPress dominates that. There are some others, but WordPress is the most common and the easiest to use and has the most services and the most YouTube videos that are free so you can actually get help on how to do WordPress. But you could actually have a website on Word, using WordPress, which is awesome because it's all kind of plug it, just plug it in and it works. Uh, and then Facebook, as she showed you with uh, Facebook pages also. And more and more businesses are actually using Facebook for their business. And in fact, you can do such a, an effective job with Facebook, you actually don't need a website in many cases. Outsourcing. If you want someone to help you, here are some websites that will, that, where you can find people. Guru.com is an excellent website. Elance.com is an excellent website. Scriptlance, if you need somebody to write some programming for it. If you want something fancy, you have this idea that you'd like to uh, have something on your website, uh, you can use Scriptlance.com. Craigslist is awesome, especially or particularly for local people. Local schools. Go into the school. Don't just call them. Talk to the guidance counselor. They'll tell you, oh, these kids, we have a, a computer programming class, and you get some kids from the class. They're fantastic. It's amazing what the kids can do today. And there is a site called Fiverr.com with two R's, F-I-V-E-R-R. -E and it's, uh, what do people do for five bucks? Well, you can actually get people in foreign countries as well as here. The things they do here for five dollars isn't exactly what they do in foreign countries, but in some countries you can get somebody to actually design a website for you for five bucks. Believe it or not, I saw one on Fiverr. It said, uh, "We'll do uh, we'll uh, do a logo of your business in a fish tank for five dollars, and we'll videotape it." <laughs> what will people do for five bucks? It's a fun site to look at, actually. Key elements of an effective website are having a clear purpose. What are you trying to accomplish with that website? You're not just trying to share information, but what do you want them to do? Easy to use. Quick load speed. You ever get to a website and it takes forever to load? Ugh, you know, most people just can't stand that and will actually not stay on your site. Uh, it should be search engine friendly. They call it SEO, which is search engine optimization. It basically means it's search engine friendly. Google likes it, it's very easy to use, and they'll rank you high. The thing is, you can have a great, great website, you can have a great service, but if you make it hard for Google, then they won't let people know that you exist. And search engine marketing, you wanna make it as a platform so you can do you know, your marketing. It captures email addresses, so you can start sending emails. It captures content, you know, other information on your potential customers. You guys know what a, page structure looks like. I've worked with a company that did uh, websites for Sony and for others. And for some of these fancy people, they want websites to look different from everybody else. Well, they've discovered that if it doesn't have a header, if it doesn't have left navigation, if they put navigation somewhere else, websites perform worse. People, it's like dry, getting into a car and suddenly the shifter's on the wrong side. It would drive you nuts. The, you know, the wind, windshield washer, you know, can you imagine if you did that? Well, the internet works the same way. Is that people have an expectation of where things are and you wanna, make, you wanna be consistent. You could be fancy in how you do it, but you should still be consistent to uh, standard websites. Your creativity should go into your content. Purpose of a website, there are four main purposes that you should focus on. The first type of website is a brochure website, which has the name of the business, contact information, description, and that's it, okay? The next one is more in-depth information. It gives people a chance to evaluate your business so it could, they could size it up compared to other businesses, see what you offer. Uh, also, it may be to size up your industry. Sometimes people are gonna offer information. I have an interior designer, and she has all these tips on how to do interior design, how to hire an interior designer. She's got links to government websites to make sure that, you know, that people are following the law and that you're not gonna get screwed by an interior designer, things like that. Lead generation, very important. You wanna focus on conversion. You wanna get capture an email address at least. Some people will capture the email address and the first name. That's fine. The more you ask for, the fewer people are going to agree to do it. So if you can just get away with capturing an email address, that's fine. If, just think how great it is if you had 10,000 10, people who are potential customers and you had their email addresses. Could you do something with that? You know? 
you have an ongoing dialogue. You start sending them information on you. At the bottom, give them, give them your contact information so they can buy from you if they want to or when they want to. Oh, and it's one, one thing that's very important is not everybody is going to buy from you the first time they meet you. Some people have to get to know you, have to date you before they marry you. I don't know if you want to marry you. No, I'm going to do that next. I was, I, was just, I was just trying to annoy you. Yeah, anytime. Like that? Okay. So, lead generation, capture their email address. And then e-commerce. Is that what you meant? Thank you. Good. We're in sync. And e-commerce is where you're actually going to sell something on your website. For that, you, you should have an inter integrated shopping cart that can process the, uh, uh, the credit card information. There are other types of websites, uh, like uh, creating your own Facebook and, and Wiki. You could actually, Wiki has software that you can get on the Wikipedia website where you can actually create a private Wiki for where you want just a bunch of people contributing information to it, which is really cool. But for the most part, we're gonna talk about these four types of websites, brochure, information, lead generation, and e-commerce. Most important thing is ask, ask and answer this for yourself, is what action do you want visitors to take when they come to your website? Okay, so what do you think these guys want you to do? I'll give you a hint. They want you, right, so, but they want you to fill in the box, right? <laughs> That's all they want you to do. So their biggest, one of their, what used to be one of their biggest competitors, what do these guys want you to do? Do you get my point? Google dominates 65% of the internet. MSN has 13%. You know why? Because when you get to the site, it's very clear what Google wants you to do. So the question is, if you have a website, is it very clear what you want your visitors to do? And I can't stress how powerful that is and how important that is. So here are a few websites. This is a one-page website, no links. Really terrific, I think. She's got a real nice picture on the top. Sticky Fingers Catering, pretty cool name. A description of what she does. I can't tell you how many sites I look at and you can't figure out, if you don't know the industry, you don't know the company, you have no clue what they do. You ever been to a website like that? Gourmet and homestyle catering, so she's telling you what she does. And then the next most important thing is she has a shopping list on the bottom of the types of things she's available for. In this case, she says executive lunches, birthdays, weddings, funerals. Hopefully you'll find yourself on that and go, oh, that's what we want, and then it connects. She's got some nice photos. She's got a nice testimonial on the, on the home page, on the only page. She has a, a description of what geographical area she works in. She's asking you for information. Uh, she's saying, you know, for a no obligation quote, click on the link or call. And then of course she has contact information. And by the way, I show contact information because it's surprising. We've seen many sites that actually don't have contact information. I know that sounds bizarre, but I'll show you an example. Okay, here's a more conventional site that has multiple pages. Here's the uh, taskbar across the top. The uh, nav, nav link, they call it a nav bar, navigation bar, has the most common links. Home, about us, services, uh, and contact us. This is a landscaping company, really terrific. He says what area he serves, Tampa Bay in this case, and 13 years. So he's letting people know, I've been around for a while, so that's one of his most important sales points. He has his phone number. Why? He wants you to call and he wants to make it really easy. So the phone number is right there. And even though he has a link for services, he says below, our services. Again, one of the most important things you can put on your home page is a list of what are the services that when people come there that, so they know who you are and what you offer. Very important point. This is called above the fold in, in uh, website 
terms. If you have a newspaper, you ever see a newspaper is folded in half when you get it? And all the stuff on the top is called above the fold. Well, they use the same term in the internet as above the, it's called above the fold, and it means your most important information needs to be on the screen without their having to scroll. And the reason is because the more people scroll, the more people have to click, the more work you make for them, the less likely they're gonna buy. People stay on a website for an average of five seconds unless they find something they're interested in and then hopefully you'll have them for longer. So this is a nice looking website, a really nice looking website. There are two problems. The first problem is above the fold, it's giving almost no information. So it's wasted space. Even though it's beautiful, it's wasted space. You know, somebody's coming here because they want something and you're making them work to get it. And the other thing, which is really wacky, wacky is a good word, is there's no contact information. This is one of those sites I found that have no contact information. In the top right, there's a tiny little email box, but even if you click that, it makes you open up a program and everything else. There's, I couldn't find a phone number. You can't, there's, it's like, oops, did somebody forget to tell them? And this site has been up for over a year, and nobody has figured out that there's no phone number, no contact information. This is a terrific site. Above the fold, everything's above the fold. Has a clear name of the company and simplifying technology, so a little bit about the company so you can tell what they do, or a little bit about what they do. Has a navigation bar across the top, home contact, client list, and services. So they know the kind of things that their clients are interested in. They want to know what's your client list, you know. A nice photograph across the top showing you what they do. Here's that list again, a shopping list of what they do. And then view our portfolio because they know a lot of people are going to come here. They're going to want to see other examples of who you've done work for. Most important thing is this is answering the questions that somebody is asking when they come to your website. Has certification so they can see that this, these people are probably qualified. A brief concept uh, that uh, they believe every job should be done on time and on budget. Contact information. Oh, and at the bottom of the page, they didn't need to do it because it's all above the fold, it's a tiny page, but at the bottom of the page, they repeat the links. If you have a long page especially, you should have your links on the bottom also. Again, what you're trying to do is you're trying to make it as easy as possible for them to navigate your website. Does that make sense? And we do studies on an ongoing basis. There are lots of studies where you see the harder it is for people, the more people lose patience with the site, the more you make them move around and scroll up and down and all that stuff. They just lose interest. Uh, they put a date on the top, which is interesting. It adds a sense that the, the website is current, even though it's funny because it's just a little piece of code in there that changes every day. And they have some basic information, including about us in that one. So that's, you know, there's a, a sample site. Here's a sample e-commerce site, just so you can see that. Uh, they tell you again right away what they do. Radio-controlled cars, trucks, and helicopters. Right away, you know what it is. I mean, you see the pictures, but they're telling you in text as well. And then get top brands direct from the RC experts. So they're giving you a reason to buy from them. This nav bar is tremendous. It's asking the questions that people ask. It's answering the questions that people ask when they come to the website. What are your best sellers? Isn't that something that people would want to know, besides what they're seeing here? What's new and just in? That's really powerful for repeat visitors. Repeat visitors want, want to know what's new. I've already been there before, but what's the new stuff? Uh, gift ideas. And these people know from the questions they've asked, have been asked, the types of questions that people are asking, and they put the answers on the website. That's very important, very powerful. Down the left side, they've got some good navigation buttons. The, part, the top part is products that they have. The middle part is parts and accessories, because they know that People have a wheel that broke and they need to get another wheel or they want a more powerful engine. The bottom part is information. What they, what's really valuable about that is they have instruction manuals. So they said, if you ever bought something from us, you can come to our website and we have instruction manuals. I have this interior designer I was talking about and she's got instruction manuals that she got off the Trade Association website. Sometimes you can actually get them for free and have a PDF and you allow people to download them off your site. 
You want to be careful you don't infringe on copyright, but there's lots of really good information that you can offer. The more valuable you can be uh, to your, your visitors or customers, the more they're going to like you and your website and buy from you. In this case, this, when you're talking about e-commerce particularly, you want people to come back over and over and over again. So if people are coming back, what are the things they want? What they're doing in this case is they're giving, they're answering their questions and giving them reasons to come back over and over again. Of course, they have their photos, which should change periodically because it's e-commerce. You don't always have to change your website, but if you're going to have somebody coming back on an ongoing basis, you should have new content at least once every one or two months. A search bar because they have lots of products. They're answering questions here. It's safe and secure, fast delivery, easy returns. You think people ask, is it easy to return if I buy it and I don't like it? I'm sure they have lots of people asking that. So this way they answer it right up there. Hey, we're easy to buy from. That's what you want to let them know. We're easy to buy from. Uh, they got an article. So they give you a link to, in this case, it's a radio article, but it could be a print article. Somebody wrote something about you. And they ship FedEx and UPS. Again, I can hear the customers saying, hey, do you guys, how do you guys ship? Oh, yeah, we ship. UPS and FedEx, and they've got that up on top, the credit cards. Most important, they're capturing the email. It says here, get 5% off your next order when you sign up for our newsletter because they're getting the email address, and then they can send ongoing emails because how much does it cost to send out a catalog? If anybody's ever sent out a catalog, those thick things, it costs a fortune, and it costs nothing except your email service to send out emails. And they have a bookmark which allows you to, you know, people to bookmark the website. So I was saying also that blog, people are using blogs for websites also. Uh, blogs such as WordPress is a good example. There are others, Drupal and Joomla and others, but WordPress is by far the easiest. It's one of those things, when I started I used WordPerfect and I hated Word because it was like the big giant Microsoft. But I eventually had to give in <laughs> because everybody was on Word. So. Uh, WordPress is the same. WordPress was originally designed for people who wanted to put their opinions up on the website and to give them an easy way to do that. Today, websites are built with a WordPress platform, and major websites are built on a Word WordPress platform. A blog provides an ideal website structure. It's easy to navigate. It's SEO friendly. The search engines love it because they know the format of a blog. It's easy to manage. You can add content. It's really easy. Ding, ding, ding. You can just What's your headline, type it in. What's your content, you type it in. And then you could hit enter and you have an article up on your website with nice graphics. It looks, it looks nice how it fits into the page. Encourages community. Blog has uh, asked for people to give you um, feedback. In fact, it's designed automatically too. If you wanted to not give them feedback, you have to uncheck a box. And it has built-in subscription. They call it stickiness, which means people will stay on your site and come back. It's something called an RSS feed, which means people can subscribe, and then every time you have a new article, they'll get a notification on the bottom of their website or uh, email or, or their computer screen. And here it is. Here's a blog. It looks just like uh, websites. Oops. I pushed the wrong button. There we go. Uh, now let's talk about conversion. You're bringing people to a landing page. In web terms, we call it a landing page, which means whenever they click on an ad or something and land on some page, that's the landing page, okay? A landing page could be an internal page on your website or it could be your home page. So you've heard this before, but I'll say it again. What action do you want the visitor to take? Do you want them to give you an email or a first name in an email? Do you want them to indicate interest and generate a lead for you? Do you want them to purchase a product? Do you want them to click on an ad? Do you want them to click on an affiliate link? Affiliate links are actually pretty cool. There are lots of people that will actually pay you a commission uh, if you'll sell their products on, on your website. Uh, anyone know who the master of that is and basically who started, even though they didn't invent it, they started the industry? Amazon, that's right, Amazon is the king. That's how Amazon has become a multi-billion dollar business, literally by getting everybody to advertise on their website, on your website, their products, and they give you a 12 to 15% commission. So you could sell like a washing machine that if Amazon has it on theirs, on your website. And, but you could also sell books, by the way. 
The key is limit the choices. When people come to your website, give them few choices. And here are some examples. Progressive.com, and I'm giving big companies, but you can copy and paste what they're doing, uh, do the same ideas of what they're doing uh, for, for your website. Well, Progressive wants you to get a quote. They want you to get hooked into, you know, try, you know, find out what our price is. So they ask you right away, get a quote. I mean, it's obvious when you come to the website, there's nothing else. They're gonna give you some basic information, but they're trying to funnel you, just like Google was, to their search bar to do something. Then the next, what they do is, they have lots of questions they ask you. So they ask you one question or two questions, and then you click on it, and suddenly they have this massive page. It's like page one of, I don't know, eight or something. But they try to get you to fill out. But it's, it's pretty cool because they hired a programmer from one of those sites, and the programmer created this program that gets them filling out all, these, all this information, and then it actually spits out a quote to them. Also, it gives them an opportunity to ask for, talk to a live person if they want to. And because there's so much information, this will take them through multiple pages, it says you can return later. So they can actually do part of the, fill out part of the form and then go on to the next, uh, come back to it over and over again. Now this is complicated, but some of them are simpler. You can just offer a book or free piece of information on your uh, website. Here's a book publisher, it's uh, called Print On Demand Publisher. And they say, free book publishing guide, absolutely free. We're gonna mail it to you. Part of why they say they're gonna mail it to you, they are mailing it to them, is because then they can ask for your mailing address, and then of course they ask you for your phone number. Then they do a sales job of what a great book this is. It'll show you if you're interested in getting published by yourself. Um, publishing a book yourself, it'll tell you everything you wanna know. And by the way, we know you're online, so you're probably impatient. So even though we're gonna mail it to you, as soon as you fill out the form, will give you a downloadable version right away. You know, it's amazing how, um, so they have these book covers, a lot of book cover services online, and so you can, what used to be just an article that somebody would write, you, know, you can, now you can turn it into a PDF, okay, so it's easily downloadable. You put a book cover on the front of it and suddenly it looks like a book. And so you ever see these things? They put them all the time. I use them all the time. Uh, and so it takes that book over here and it makes, it, you can actually take an article, it's a glorified article, if you put a nice book cover on it, it looks like it's a really nice book. And people have a sense, a perception, it's how the mind works, that wow, this is really of substance. Here's American Vision Windows, and what they're doing is, you know, call now to schedule a free in-home estimate, and it has the information there. And of course you can offer something for free, or an opportunity to win something as well. So when it comes to your web, the internet, and the internet's awesome for this, is you can track everything. You can track the traffic source of where people are coming from to get to your website. You can track keywords that people are clicking on to get to your website. You can track uh, click-through rates. How many people are actually clicking from page to page? Page views, which views, which pages specifically are people viewing? How fast do they stay on a page? How long do they stay on a page? Conversions. How many people are, cl are clicking from one page to actually buy something if you're selling it or to uh, you know, asking a request for more information? There's a great tool called Google Analytics. It's absolutely free. If you go to Google and just type in Google Analytics, it, gives you, it shows you how to do it. There's a little piece of code. You have to know how to do the code thing of, on your website. But it's, usually, it's pretty simple or you can get somebody to do that for you. You take this piece of code and you put it on every website, every web page. Also, there's split testing, A-B testing. I come from the advertising industry, and the advertising industry hates Google. They are the evil empire. And the reason they hate Google is because Google believes in a pay-per-click, is that if somebody doesn't click on your ad, you shouldn't have to pay. And that's awesome when you're marketing, because you don't, especially with pay-per-click advertising, because now I can see if people are actually clicking on my ad, if they like it or not. Well, Google and others allow you to do split testing, where half the people get one ad, half the people get another ad, you can see which headline people like, you know, then you can change it. Which color people, you know, if they like one color instead of another color, I have color text in my emails that I send out or my uh, ads that I have, et cetera. And you can test the offer. Do they like this offer? Do they like a free this? Do they like, you know, what else it is? But they, you get to test it and see what works and what doesn't work. Okay, strategic keywords. This is a mind-numbing section, but I'll go through it really quickly. But keywords are the essence, the backbone of internet marketing. The critical 
role of keywords that you want to identify strategic keywords, then you want to build your web properties around those keywords. You're going to use it for your website, blogs if you do blogs, Facebook, Twitter. And here's what a keyword is in case people aren't really clear. I used to think a keyword was a single word. It's not. It's multiple words. It could be a single word, but it's usually multiple words. I'm going to show you that. It's what are people typing into a search engine? What are the, what's the, when you have that Google bar across, what are people typing in? That would be most relevant to capture the types of the, the exact customers that you want. So you guys know the, if you've ever typed into Google, you know what it looks like. Well, here's how you find uh, some of the best uh, keywords. The first thing you're looking for, you'd go into Google and type in what you think is a search term that people would look for, let's say uh, hot dog cart in this case. The great thing about Google is you, you type in hot dog cart and it gives you a bunch of examples. Hot dog cart, hot dog carts. By the way, here's something. Hot dog carts is a different keyword than hot dog cart. Singular versus plural. Each one Google sees is a totally different keyword because some people type in hot dog cart and some people type in hot dog carts. Hot dog carts for sale, hot dog carts for sale in Los Angeles, hot dog cart rental, hot dog cart business, and it gives you the beginnings of examples of keywords that you can use and you write them down, make sure you get them exactly. Then at the bottom, on the left hand side, many people don't know this, uh, Google has a link that's called Wonder Wheel. When you click on Wonder Wheel, up comes this, which is a circular chart that has a list of similar keywords. Okay. Besides Wonder Wheel, there's something called related searches. You can click on that and it will give you a visual uh, list similar to Wonder Wheel of different keywords that Google recognizes as being similar. Now, you may not recognize it as being similar, so you're going to have to go through it and sort through those. Then Google has a free keyword tool, to, key, we, free keyword tool. I don't know, those letters didn't work. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Google wants you to buy advertising from them, so they make it as easy as possible. So they have a keyword tool. If you go to Google and you type in Google keyword, it comes up automatically and you just click on that and it's a Google keyword tool. I want to suggest if you're looking for keywords, you want to, when you do this, sign up for a free uh, keyword account. It's absolutely free. They're not going to hound you. They're not going to send you emails or anything else, but it gives you more services if you do that. You don't have to, but then they make you fill out this annoying captcha, they're called, which is you have to read the letters and type it in each time and it gives you fewer choices of things to do. But on the top, it gives you a chance to type in your keyword and then hit search and it will show you tons of examples. You can also take a competitor's website and enter that in here and it will show you the keywords that a major competitor is, uh, is uh, ranking under as far as Google's concerned. Once you click on that, especially if you have an account, you get this a few of the extra services here. It has a shopping list. Here's what the page looks like. Obviously, it has the Google stuff on top but it has the shopping list of keywords in the first column. The next column has competition. That means how many people are, co are advertising, uh, competing for advertising. You should have some advertising if you're looking for a good keyword. There should be some competitors there, I mean. Because the internet is so well trolled that virtually everything, if it's any good at all, people have figured it out and are trying to advertise on that, okay? The next one, the next column has global monthly searches, which just shows you they have global and local. Local for Google is America, global is international. But it doesn't matter what the number is, but it, it, you can see what the numbers are. The last column, and this is when you have a Google account, you can get this, it's approximate CPC, which means cost per click. This will actually show you what people are spending for a keyword. Not that you would go and buy the keyword, but it's really cool to find out what people are spending a ton of money on as far as you can see. Here's one's 51 cents, one's over a dollar, one's over two dollars. And so people consider them really valuable. Now you may look at it and say, that's not for me, that's fine. But it helps to look at a, the keywords and understand which ones people are spending lots of money on.
Okay, you know the ad? You ever see, I'll, I'll show you that in a couple of minutes because you're gonna see where people spend money. But on, when you type in uh, something in Google, on the right-hand side, and on, it spills over on top, so I'll show you that, but on the right-hand side are paid ads. That's called pay-per-click, okay? Well, this is telling you how much they paid for those ads, okay? And there's a lot of information. I wanna say, I, I learned so much about the internet and internet marketing, and I thought my head was gonna explode, okay? And so many of you are probably like that too. Well, internet, this is how it works. There's so much information, and I'm gonna take you through this. Like I said, I'm a pack rat, so I've got lots of information to take you through. Don't worry about whether it sinks in or doesn't sink in, because you're gonna hear it over and over and over again, but this is an overview of all the stuff, okay? I notice there's some people in the audience that specialize on some of these areas, and especially, you know, they market, hey, I, do, I can optimize you on the internet and stuff like that, and it's because people look at this and get a headache, as I did for a long time, but for some bizarre reason, I seem to have gotten it. Uh, selecting the ideal keyword. Okay, so here's something to note across. I never saw this before, and a lot of people have never seen this before. When you type in a keyword in Google, Underneath it is a number, okay? In this case, it says, I did hot dog carts for sale, and it says 68,600. That's how many competing pages Google has found that have the term hot dog carts for sale, okay? It's incredible. What you're looking for, if you have, you can actually rank number one, if you, you can rank number one on Google or if not number one on the search term, at least in the top few, if a page has fewer than two million competing pages, typically about 600,000, but I just, so if you're looking for it, I'm gonna show you an example here. So let's say, let's say you were selling motorcycle insurance in Ventura, which I'm sure nobody is selling here, but I thought I'd pick that. Okay, motorcycle insurance in Ventura. So if I just looked up the word insurance, this is a phenomenal, two, Anybody see what that number is? Two billion pages have the word insurance on it. Two billion pages. Oh yeah, sorry, excuse me. She said two billion, 60 million. <laughs> What's 60 million between friends? I know. <laughs> sorry, I messed up there. There's something that's called long-tailed keyword, which means you can extend the keyword by adding a few more words on it, and then suddenly you're gonna have fewer competitors. So in this case, motorcycle, instead of just insurance, they did motorcycle insurance rates, and they only have 1.6 million pages they're competing with, okay? And if you do motorcycle insurance rates Ventura, guess what, 171,000 pages. And for most of your businesses, certainly if you do it regionally, and you add that on the keyword, then you're gonna easily, if you do a good job, you can rank number one. And I couldn't believe how easy this is. I mean, when I say easy, you need help, but it's, it's amazing how you can uh, rank in keywords. But one more thing you wanna look for in keywords, this is a critical area, and I lost a ton of money trying this until I, learned, I was coached on how to do this. There's intent, intent to buy keywords, which means, if somebody types in hot dog cart, they may just be doing research because most people go to the internet not to buy stuff, most people go to the internet to do research, right? But some people are frustrated or they've done all their research and they wanna buy something. Those people are gonna type in a different keyword than those people who are just searching. So hot dog cart and hot dog cart business could be somebody who's researching, but hot dog carts buy or hot dog carts pricing would definitely be more likely somebody who's looking to buy and so what you want to do is you want to, you want to look for uh, intent, intent, doesn't like my T's, intent to buy keywords. So we have an interior designer. And I first put up interior design. Well, guess what? A lot of people would watch HGTV and want to, want to do design on their house. And so they immediately go to the internet and type in interior design. You're going to get lots of those people. So if it's an interior designer, what might be a keyword that's more... Uh, for somebody who wants to hire an interior designer? Hire services? How about, oops, how about company? Interior design companies, interior design firms, things like that. Okay, you have to use a little bit of your sense, but when you start looking at the lists of keywords, you start to recognize, wait, this is probably a buyer. This is probably somebody who's ready to buy, and that's what you want is someone who's ready to buy and identify those keywords. Those are the most valuable for you. 
we had a pet supplement website and we did dog allergy. Well, a lot of people are just looking for allergy remedies and stuff like that. But if we type in dog allergy remedy or doing research, dog allergy remedy, we got a lot more intent to buy people. And digital cameras or some product, obviously, if you want a Kodak ZI8 pricing, you're probably ready to buy and you're comparing prices. So intent to buy is, is critical when you understand the keywords. Okay, traffic. Primary traffic sources, how do you bring people to your website? Well, the search engines, and I could do multiple days on this, so I'm not going to. Uh, social media, organic and paid for both of those, which means natural where you're gonna come up and also paid, because most of these have advertising. That's where they make their living. Uh, directories, and I'm gonna show you an example of this. These are awesome. Uh, blogs. Forums, articles, press releases, uh, video submissions, you know, submissions to uh, certain sites that have video like YouTube, but there are lots of others. Partner websites, you might have somebody who has a really great product that's synergistic with yours. Uh, email, of course, banner ads. And offline, brochures, cards, when you have a speaking engagement like Kelly did before, she invited you to come to her website and you're gonna get some content, okay? You know what the most important one on this whole list is? No? Well, email's the cheapest, but it's press releases. It's, there's something that's called backlinks, which means if CNN had an article on you, if uh, the Ventura County Star had an article on you and in the bottom of the article it said, your website address and link back to you, then Google ranks you really high. I work with a company and he had this really cool product and uh, he got uh, um, interviewed by CNN, by Fox News, by uh, ABC, by NBC and all that stuff. He did no optimization at all, but because he had links from them to his website, he was number one for all these keywords. He owned this, he still does. In fact, it's some of the products he doesn't sell and he still owns the number one spot whenever you type in those search terms because he got articles to write, articles to have a link back to his website. There's some really good services. PR web costs money. Media Sync Online does not cost money where you can actually write, in, write a press release and you could submit it and they'll submit it to like a gazillion uh, press sources. It's really good. I want to hold the question until after because I have, I have a day's worth of information here, okay? So you can come up to me after and ask me informations, information. Uh, blogs and video. Google knows that with a website, you might put it up and not change it for a year or two years, okay? But if you're putting up a, a blog, I have a timer here. If you're putting up a, a blog posting, there's a very good chance that every day or every week you'll be putting up a new posting. And so Google will come back to you very often and they can rank you higher because of that. And video, Google owns YouTube. And they know that people love video. So because people love video, they rank video very high. And video is easy. They have the flip cameras. Have you guys seen those? It's like awesome. I can pull out a flip camera right now and just start videotaping and I have it. And there's, it's a plug. It plugs right into your computer and you could upload it to YouTube. It's got a, a, you know, it's set up so you can just upload it to YouTube right then and there. And it's amazing that people go, oh, well, it's not professional enough for my business, you know. The heck with that. <laughs> you know, let's do an interview right now with a customer. And then well, let's put that interview on, the, on. And people go like, whoa, I couldn't. That was so easy. I couldn't believe it, you know. It's just, it's amazing how much is available. But you have to be a kid, because kids find it a lot easier than adults. That's what I've learned. I, I go like, oh wow, I just discovered this thing, and my kids go, duh, you know? How long did it take you to figure that out? Uh, search engine marketing. You want to drive tra traffic from the big three, and the big three are Google, Yahoo, and Microsoft. And as I showed you before, Google dominates. 65% of US search market uh, is Google versus Yahoo at 16% and Microsoft at 13%. And even though Microsoft and Yahoo have joined together for marketing, it hasn't really helped them much. And the reason is because Google is easy, just like the, one of the things I'm talking about with you guys. Google is really easy, and they're constantly trying to make it easier and easier. Their biggest fear by far, their biggest competitor, you know who they're, they're more afraid of than anybody else? That's right, Facebook, by far. That's the only one they're, they're afraid of. 
So attracting visitors through Google. To answer one of the questions that somebody was asking, here, here's, here's a search page, okay? And here's all the ways to bring customers using a search page. Okay, I typed in my term, back to Motorcycle Insurance Rates Ventura. Then I've got pay-per-click ads on the right-hand side, which spills over to the top. It didn't always do this, but a, a few years back, Google realized that they can make, you know, they can get much more people on a page advertising if they spilled over to the top, and then people would love it because they'll bid more for those keywords. The nice thing about Google is, you know, you don't have to be in number one position to actually make money if you're going to do pay per click. But that's pay per click. That's the first part of a web page, of a search page. The next one is. Um, I've lost my mind. Oh, sorry. No, that's the. Whew, that's what I was just showing you. The uh, pay-per-click uh, going over to the spilling over to the top. The next one, which is awesome, in every one of you should do this, or almost every one of you should do this. It's called Google, Google Places, or Google Maps. If you go to Google and type in Google Maps, you're going to have a section that looks like this. Okay, it comes up whenever people are looking for a certain type of business particularly if it's, it's geographically based. And it's absolutely free. They put you in a list with a bunch of other people. They do the push pins with the, the map that shows you where you are. And it's on top of the natural Google search terms. So it comes up, and it's absolutely free. Did I say that? It's absolutely free. And here's what it looks like. So here's a list. Here's a civil engineer, a friend that I know that I was helping him with. He got his listing. If you scroll over the magnifying glass, it actually shows you what the page that you created looks like. It lets you create a whole, it, it doesn't show your web page. You have to create a page on it, but it shows you how to do it. Here's the page that you create with that absolutely free. Lets you put uh, content in here, a little bit of text. It limited. It doesn't let you write an inf infinite number of uh, amount of text, but it lets you put uh, text in there. It lets you put photos in here. It lets you put videos, YouTube videos in here. So if somebody clicks on this, they could actually watch YouTube videos. And of course, it has the push pin. I think that's pretty cool, isn't it? That it's and it's free. It's free. Uh, ask me after. What's organic? Does it have organs? Helps with your search terms also, by the way. Well, then there's directories, so check this, okay? So I tore my leather jacket, and I wanted to get uh, my jacket repaired. And so I couldn't remember the name of the place, so I went to the internet and I typed in leather repair Thousand Oaks. I live up in the Thousand Oaks area, Newbury Park. And uh, out of the five listings, this guy's a hole in the wall play, so really he does fabulous work, but he's a hole in the wall, and four of the five listings are his. <laughs> and he doesn't know about internet. I'm sorry, I've seen him, I've talked to him. He barely speaks English, he's a really nice guy. He's so talented, but he, how does he do it? He has a kid, that's right, he has a kid do it. That's how he does it. <laughs> no, here's a fabulous tool. You have to pay for it, but uh, super pages, the newspapers, LA Times, and I'm not talking about buying an ad in the LA Times. They actually have a service because so, people, so many people have dropped off their rate, as you saw with the guy from the star, it's the same thing. So many people have dropped off buying newspaper advertising that now they sell this stuff and they know how to rank high because they learned how to rank themselves high. And then they went, somebody internally went, hey, maybe we can sell this because maybe other people are going to want to rank high too. And so they actually will, you buy a little ad, which I'll show you what the ads look like. And this rinky-dink little hole-in-the-wall place has a steady flow of business because he's, this is one that's called addresses.com. And here's the SC Star, uh, Ventura County Star, excuse me, okay? And by the way, how you figure out which ones these are, I've got these here, so you've seen these, is go to, click on whatever city you're in and look for a business that's kind of like yours, maybe the same as yours, if not the same as yours, be creative and find something that's different and see which Direct, you can read it in www.superpages.com. Read what's there. That's showing you who knows how to optimize, and that's what you want to buy from. Does that make sense? 
Okay, it's such a powerful tool. It's like, it's amazing. You don't have to know any of this stuff. But I'm going to torture you by giving you a little bit more. Oh, by the way, here's what they look like. So the link's like this uh, for super pages. And here's one for uh, the addresses.com. This was his third listing. And he spent a little bit more money and bought a little ad there as well to make him stand out a little more. I guess some of his competitors were there, so he figured, let me stand out more. Here's another free service called Google, Google Shopping. So on a web page, if you have a product that you sell, you can actually offer it for free. Did I say that? Free <laughs> off Google. Now, you go to Google and you type in Google Shopping, and it will take you to how to set up a page like this. This is a little complicated. I think it's a relatively new service that they're offering. They've had it for a while, but they've gotten more sophisticated with it. But they let you list with other people for absolutely for free. This is if you're selling something. And then it, it lets you land on a page. And as I said, it's submit products for free, which is really cool. So summary, know your website's purpose. What is it that you're trying to accomplish when people land on your website? Make it easy with the clear action. Answer visitor questions. When they, think of what people are going to ask when they land on your website and answer those questions. Capture contact information. That's so crucial. It's awesome because then you can send emails to them on an ongoing basis to bring them back to your site or to get them to buy from you. And you can buy very sophisticated. You know who uses this? Boeing uses this. This is not just you know small businesses, large businesses, stores use this. This is awesome. Everybody's using this because they realize, wow, why have this company that has these things that cost uh, $35,000 a piece? Uh, they sell to big companies. Well, they would kill to get the email addresses of potential buyers. And then they don't send them email saying, hey, want to buy, want to buy, want to buy, want to buy. They send them an email saying, hey, did you know here's this new thing uh, in the internet? Oh, by the way, I'll give you a trick. There's something called Google Alerts, which is awesome. And every one of you should sign up for Google Alerts relative to your business. It's absolutely free. And what it does is, it, you should do it once a, once a week. Don't do it once a day. It gives you a choice. Do you want it once a day, once a week? Once a week, it will send you a list of every article pertaining to a, your topic. It's awesome. Everything that's on the internet. If CNN had an article, if Venture Star had an article, if somebody on their website had an article, it sends you this li list. And you can scroll through them and see stuff. So that's really great because then, even if you wanted to send an email, you can have read something and gone, oh, wow, hey, did you know the law just changed for so-and-so, blah, blah, blah. You can send this really cool email. By the way, at the bottom, put your contact information. And by the way, I specialize in da da da, -da. Put it at the bottom, not the top. So this way, they're getting free information first, and they get that there's an ad. Some people will go, wow, this is really cool, and these people know how to you know, know this business, and I'd like to buy from them. And some people, it'll take 10 or 20 emails before they do that. Above the fold, remember that. Uh, be search engine friendly and use the free tools, the maps, the shopping, and Google Analytics. And I hope that was helpful. Uh, we have in you know, advertising for SCORE, but this was a lot in a short period of time, but we actually have workshops. We're all volunteers, so we charge a minimal amount, but they're awesome workshops, and our workshops on web marketing are really terrific also. Uh, in fact, it was, if you thought I said a lot in a short period of time, the biggest complaint we had was we had it in one, on one Saturday from 8.30 till 3. We had to turn it into two Saturdays. And even then, we have too much information. So sorry about that. But it's really awesome. And SCORE is just a really great resource. So I hope that was helpful. And we'll be back in 45 minutes with our next one. Okay.